morning and Merry Christmas, Abundant Life Church. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we are just praying God's presence over you as you worship with us and listen to Pastor Devin's message. And we're just praying um, over your whole Christmas day that it's, it's just blessed in what your heart means. Heart the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all the nations rise Join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn Christmas, everybody. 
So thankful that we just have that time to just sing um, glory to the newborn king. This is what Christmas is all about. This is what Christmas morning is all about. I am so honored that you just take some time to watch live here this morning on Christmas morning or later in the day or whenever you're watching this. Thank you so much for joining us today. We pray and believe that this is just a special time for you. I pray that you're surrounded by loved ones. Pray that you know God's love is near to you today. And you know, Christmas morning, like there's so much going on, right? And we make this this whole season about Christmas, right? And even though our culture really kind of overhypes Christmas in a way with the, the tradition and the sales and the commercialism, I'm so thankful that it's a big deal because it's about Jesus, right? And Jesus is a big deal. And today we just wanna remind us, we just wanna take a little reminder for all of us to say, we want to stop and worship him. We just want to honor him. We just want to recognize that even though there's so much going on today, that he is the most important thing in our lives and he's greater than everything in our hearts and in our lives. And he deserves us to just stop and focus on him. You know, hopefully you've taken some time to read the Christmas story reading up to today or maybe last night if you were part of a Christmas Eve service listening to the Christmas story. But you know, the thing that's that about the Christmas story is there's so many different people in the Christmas story, right? You have, um, you know, obviously Mary and Joseph who are so important and you have the angel appearing to, to Joseph saying, Joseph, don't be afraid, you know, uh, for what's conceived in your wife is from the Holy Spirit. She's going to bear a son named Jesus. He's going to save people. Angel at a different time appears to Mary, right? Mary, you know, don't be afraid. You found favor with God, you know, and uh, you're going to conceive a son and his name is Jesus. And you have these two pivotal characters in this story. But but we also have all these other characters, right? You have the angel that appears to the shepherd, right? Saying, you know, I come to you with great news, right? That there's going to be a, a, a newborn king born. And then all these angels appear in the sky singing glory to God in the highest, right? And these shepherds, they just stop and they just stare and they worship God and they go find Jesus and they worship Jesus. And, and, and then they go tell everybody, right? And then not just the shepherds, you have then the wise men who, yes, you know, probably came a couple years later, you know, to find Jesus traveled from afar and, and they bowed down before him. You know, so you have all these different characters, Simeon and, and uh, Anna, the prophetess, also worshiping. But if you think about it, you have actually people in the story who didn't worship Jesus. You have people like Herod who hated Jesus. King Herod wanted to find him and kill him. You know, you had, you know, all the Romans who were overseeing that land at the time, governing the land of Judea, and they were just worried about what is uh, Caesar Augustus saying and what is the, 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 what is my commander telling me what to do? And they were just working probably, you know, 80 hours a week, you know, doing their jobs and just worried about trying to get moving up the ranks in the Roman rules. You had all the Jewish religious rulers going through their normal traditions, missing out on what God was doing. You had the innkeeper, right? I mean, can you imagine the innkeeper? Like he had no clue that the Messiah, the God's son was being born out in the stables, right? And they completely missed it. People all around, they completely missed it. And you know, today, you know, this special Christmas morning filled with opening gifts and seeing family and friends and probably filled with traveling, maybe filled with watching TV or watching the Christmas TV show over and over again or football or whatever it might be, you know, um, may it not be a, a moment where we miss worshiping Jesus. All right, that's just my call to us today, that we would just, just taking this 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever it might be, that we're just stopping and saying, we don't want to miss Jesus, but we want to just take time to worship and honor him. And you know, when I use that word worship and honor him, you know, I, I know there's a lot of different thoughts that come when we think of worship. Um, but just real quick, like what, what does worship mean? You know, can I just remind us today that worship is more than singing, you know, I'm so thankful for Thomas and Lily just leading us in a song. They're going to lead us in some singing in a little bit, you know, singing is part of it. You know, when Mary got that word from the angel, she started singing back to God, you know, and just, and, and just expressing her heart to God. And so singing is part of it, but part of worship is just getting our eyes on what we're worshiping. You know, that's, that's why we worship so many things because we put our eyes on so many things. And, and so today we want to just get our eyes on Jesus, right? I mean, again, for unto us this day in the city of David, a savior is born glory to God in the highest. Like, like we just want to see him. 
And just think for a second, Jesus, right, was there when everything was created. He was with God from the beginning, right? I mean, the, every molecule in the universe, Jesus had his hand upon. Right? I mean, scientists are still dumbfounded because they can't get to the end of the universe, right? And this is who we worship, who we get our eyes on today. He is truly the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, right? I mean, and, and he, he could have came, you know, to just completely bring, you know, um, a wrath and destruction to the world because people were in rebellion. He could have still do that today because our world's in rebellion against God. But Jesus came with grace. Jesus came with mercy. Jesus came away to save people. Isn't that incredible, right? I mean, I'm so thankful. Yesterday I was reading Micah uh, chapter 7, 18 through 20. And, and again, just trying to see God in scripture, just trying to see Christ in scripture. And Micah 7, 18 says, where, an- where is there another God like you who pardons the guilt of the remnant, overlooking the sins of his special people? For you will not stay angry with your people forever because you delight in showing unfailing love. Once again, you will have compassion on us. You will trample our sins under your feet and throw them in the the depths of the ocean. You will show us your faithfulness and your unfailing love as you promised to our ancestors, Abraham and Jacob long ago. Micah was worshiping Jesus in that moment, even though Jesus wasn't even born. He was worshiping God saying, God, is there another God like you? Right? I mean, and I'm just so thankful. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm thankful he takes my sin, he tramples upon them, right? And he throws them in the depths of the sea, right? Like that is such good news to us today, you know, because Jesus came, right, to fulfill the Old Testament prophecies. Jesus came to bring the message of hope to us, and he came to show us the fullness of God's love and mercy. And today we can just behold him. We can just see him today. That's part of our worship, just stopping and saying, Jesus, I see you, right? You know, we can be like the shepherds, right? Who, when they heard this message, they stopped everything they did. They went and they beheld Jesus, right? They went and found him and they looked upon him. And not only did they look upon him, you know how they worshiped him? They went and told everybody. Right? They went and took that message with everybody. Part of worship is us not being ashamed to, to tell everybody the good news that is in our hearts. Right, And that's not something forced. That's something we get to do. Just like today, you don't even have to ask. If you got children around you or relatives come, I guarantee you they will be telling you what they got for Christmas because they are so excited. That's how we should be. right? We're excited to just share of the goodness of God through Christ. Today is Christmas. We're excited in a text message of people. Today, Jesus, we celebrate Jesus' birth or in social media or at a family table or praying before a meal. It's just bringing Jesus in and not being afraid to share his goodness with other people. And finally, part of worship is not just singing and stopping and looking at him and and sharing with others, but part of worship is kind of like looking at what the wise men did. You know, when the wise men took all that time to travel from afar, it says in Matthew 1, it says, when the star rose, they came to worship him. Okay, well, what did they do when they came to worship him? It says, for when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They fell down and worshiped him. And then opening their treasure, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I love that image of the, these wise men who have a lot of resources, who are, you know, very smart, who are probably very honored, and they, they bow before Jesus in surrender. And then they open up their treasures, different kinds of treasure, and they offer it to Jesus. Listen, I'm not saying that to say you need to just give Jesus money. He doesn't just need money. But you know what we do in our hearts? We give him everything that's of value to us. A lot of different things, our time or things that we've received in our life, even things this morning. Thank you for that gift. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for gifts with friends and family. Everything is just offered. God, I, I give it back to you right, in a way, and I, I want to make time for you, right? I open up the things that are most important in my life, the treasures things, and I say, Jesus, I just lay it before you, and I say, you are Lord of my life, and you can have your way. So today, I, I just want to encourage us, just thank you so much for being with us. This is just a time for us to just say, Jesus, you're just good. You've been so kind to me. You've loved me. You've been gracious to me, and I just want to worship you, 
And I just want to make room in my heart for you. I don't want to be like the innkeeper who missed it. I don't want to be like those Jewish people who were going through all those religious uh, motions and they missed Jesus. I don't want to be like the Romans who missed it. I don't want to be like Herod who was bitter towards God and missed it. But I want to make room in my heart for Jesus this morning. And I just want to invite him in and I just want to worship him. So we're just going to take a moment right now, just as we close, just to worship a little bit more and just to surrender. And, and again, I know there's just so much going on in the day, but can I just remind you that there's, there's a peace that comes when we just pause and we wait upon the Lord and we just say, God, have your way in my life today. And we can do that going into a stressful, you know, uh, meeting at work. We can do that when we come to church on a Sunday morning. We can do that when we are, are sad and we're lonely because nobody else is with me today. And we can just say, God, come and make room. We can do that when we're about to all jump in the car and go see family and friends. You know, we can do that as a family right here. Just say, I just want to make room for you, Jesus, and I want to worship you. And as we wait upon the Lord, he will come and he will fill our hearts. So Jesus, I just thank you for everybody here today, everybody watching with us today. We just together, Lord, even though we're not in the same room, we together, we say, Jesus, I just want you to have your way in my life. Lord, I just want to surrender, Lord, this day to you. I want to surrender tomorrow to you. I want to surrender the new year to you. I want to worship you truly, Lord, not just with my lips, but in spirit and in truth today. And I want you to be glorified that today truly wouldn't just be about presents or, you know, eating pie or watching football on TV or whatever you do or whatever we do, but it would truly be about honoring Jesus today on the day that we celebrate his birth. We honor you today, Jesus. We bless you in Jesus' name. Shit.
Break up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your reign is better. Your reign is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your reign is better. up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better oh your way is better and i will make room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever you want Oh. Uh-huh. 